Hi! <laughs> Hi, hi, hi everybody. Miss you all. See you soon. Bye. 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 Hi, Bye. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hello everyone from Bournemouth. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi everyone, missing you all, can't wait to see you all soon. Hi, hi everybody. Right. Hello. Hi everybody, trust you all keeping well, missing you all. Hello. Hello, morning church. Morning. Hi everyone. Hi there, hi, how are you? Hello. Hello everybody. Hi everyone. Hello. Hello. <laughs> hi, hello, <laughs> greetings. Morning, hi, uh, great to see everyone. Hello! Hi. <laughs> Hi everyone! Morning Vineyard family! We miss, we miss you. you! Hi everybody! Hi everybody. <laughs>Good morning! Welcome along to church, welcome along to Tiverton Vineyard. Uh, my name is John, along with my beautiful wife Jude. It's our joy, it's our privilege uh, to lead the church here uh, uh, and we love uh, to do that. Our vision as a church, the thing that gets us excited is to play our part in seeing Tiverton and beyond flourish by helping people see that Jesus Christ is real and is relevant and we've been uh, walking out the vision uh, this week in a number of different ways one of the most exciting things this week is that we as a church have coordinated the distribution of thousands of pounds worth of smart devices of laptops uh, to our schools to pupils that are home learning and maybe don't have all the devices uh, they need within their household and uh, so we've been able to step into that gap as the church and, and be God's hands and his feet in a, a super uh, practical way to those that are homeschooling in this lockdown three as a result of the COVID-19 uh, pandemic and listen we are in for a treat this morning first of all we are going to get to sing our God songs we're going to worship God Mike and Helen are going to be leading us in that then we're going to be hearing from Bex uh, Bex Main sharing uh, our next installment of Family Time, looking at Psalm 139 there. Uh, hopefully you got the boxes in the post, hopefully uh, they all rocked up. And then we're going to be hearing from Keith. Keith Bibby is going to be speaking to us um, about the great adventure we're on at the start of 2021 here, and looking at the life of Abraham and just a really, really important bit of his life this morning. So it's all to play for. I hope you're buzzing for it. We've had... We've come up the, off the back of just an amazing uh, national gathering the vineyard national gathering happened for the first time uh, just in the week gone by there those uh, all those uh, talks are available now on on the social media channels of vc uki and listen just some of the greatest most inspiring uh, brilliant minds in the world sharing there so i'd so encourage you uh, to pick up that that content for those of you that, that haven't already and we're excited tonight we've got a, a youth meeting the youth will be meeting a uh, weekly on on sunday nights our 11 to 17 year olds uh, just uh, meeting on zoom as a place to be encouraged a place to be refreshed and, and a place to support uh, each other and that's happening uh, tonight seven o'clock if you've got uh, an 11 or 17 year old you would like to to um uh, connect with that group then reach out on the live chat down below or ping us uh, an email at hi at tivertonvineyard.com we'd love to uh, help you to connect uh, with that listen i'm going to uh read from the psalms now and then i'm going to pray and then we are going to uh, get into it so listen to this this is sam 46 psalm 46 god is our refuge and strength an ever-present help in trouble therefore we will not fear though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea though it 
though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar. Kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice. The earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Amen. God is our fortress. That's what we need to hear on days and in seasons like this, isn't it? So let's pray. God, we declare that this is the day that you have made and we're going to rejoice and we're going to be glad in it. And we do it not because it's a routine, not because it's some religious ritual we go through. We rejoice, we worship you because you're worthy, because you deserve it. And we lift our songs, we lift our praises uh, to you this morning. We thank you for all your goodness to us, all your faithfulness to us, your presence with us. And Father, we are excited, we are hungry, we are thirsty to meet with you, to feel your presence through the Holy Spirit and to, to extol you, to praise you, to worship you this morning. Lord, I pray for each and every one of my brothers and sisters on the other end of this camera. Father, by your Holy Spirit, would they know your presence right now? Would they know uh, that God is close, that the Father is close right now? And would you be speaking to each and every uh, one of us as only you can? So we worship you now, God. We delight in you. We say we love you. And it's our joy, it's our privilege uh, to sing and praise you this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. You're my only 
deeper So I will wait for you To come and rescue me Come and give me life Oh how I need you Lord You are my only hope Come and rescue me, come and give me life, oh yeah. Need you now. I lift my eyes up. To the mountains, where does my help come from? Is 
sorrow is there and you love me as I have yes you love
step of the journey. For you're for us and not against us. For you choose to bless us, God. Yeah, thank you, God. You go ahead of us, Lord. morning and a warm welcome um, from us here in a very snowy Tiverton this morning. Um, as you can see my boys are out enjoying the snow. Um, I'm here to join you for session two um, of our family time series. Um, I hope you all had a lovely time as a family um, joining in with session one. Thank you Jude for last week. Um, Yes, so today I'm introducing session two. Um, we're looking at Psalm 139, um, same as last week, but the next part, so verses four to six. Um, I'm here to tell you um, what's on your grab list this week. Um, so first of all, when we're looking at this, we are looking for a our Bible. That's always the first thing on our grab list, our Bible. Um, and then after that, you're going to need some cling film or a clear plastic bag. That will be in the box included. Um, we will need some stones. We're looking for some stones and a packet of biscuits. It's a bit unusual, bit of a bit of a mix. Um, and then you will need some pens and some paper. Um, and then you can work through the activities together as a family. Um, we really hope that you um, really enjoy this week's tasks um, and you really have some special time together. Um, we miss you lots um, from here at the mains and we'll see you soon. Well, good morning, good morning, good morning. For those of you who don't know me, my name's um, Keith and along with my lovely wife, we've been coming to the to Tiverton Vineyard for, well, since the early days. It's been a long while. And John's asked me to look at um, Genesis 15 um, to carry on the great uh, adventure of Abraham's. And in this chapter, we'll, we'll see God's love, God's goodness, in God's grace and it's good news and we can do with some good news at this time can't we so let's begin let's uh, read the Bible it's it's Genesis 15 uh, verses uh, 1 to 17 after this the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision do not be afraid Abraham I am your shield your very great reward but Abraham said, O Lord God, what can you give me since I remain childless and the one who will inherit my estate is Eliezer of Damascus? And Abraham said, You have given me no children, so a servant in my ha our household will be my heir. Then the word of the Lord came to him, This man will not be your heir, but a son coming from your own body will be your heir. And he took him outside and said, Look up at the heavens and count the stars, if indeed you can count them. Then he said to him, So sure, sure, so sure your offspring be. Abraham believed the Lord and he credited it to him as righteousness. He also said to him, I am the Lord who brought you up out of Ur of the Chaldeans to give it this land to take possession possession of it. But Abraham said, O sovereign Lord, how can I know that I shall gain possession of it? And so the Lord said to him, Bring me a heifer, heifer a goat and a ram, each three years old, along with a dove and a young pigeon. Abraham brought all these things to him. He cut them in two and arranged halves opposite each other. The birds, however, he did not cut in half. Then the birds of prey came down on the carcasses, but Abraham drove them away. As the sun was setting, Abraham fell into a deep sleep, and a thick and dreadful darkness came over him. Then the Lord said to him, 
Know for certain that your descendants will be strangers in a country not their own, and they will be enslaved and ill-treated for four hundred years. But I will punish the nation that ser they serve as slaves, and afterwards they will come out with great possessions. You, however, will go to your fathers in peace and be buried at a good old age. In the fourth generation, your descendants will come back here for the sin of the Amorites have not yet reached its full measure. And when the sun had set and darkness had fallen, a smoking brazier with a blazing torch appeared and passed through the pieces. Thank you, Lord. Let's, let's pray. Lord, let your word be a, a light to our paths. May, may it refresh us and restore us. Speak to us anew, Lord. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to start, first of all, with uh, a promise given. A promise given. And the story so far, we, we read in the, in the previous chapter that Abraham had defeated four uh, eastern kings and stopped them from carrying off Lot into captivity. And the custom at that time was that the plunder taken from the battle would have legally have belonged to Abraham. But the king of Sodom came along and Abraham gave up his rights to the riches and returned them to the king of Sodom so that nobody could say that they had made Abraham rich. So that when Abraham received the promises of God, God alone would get the glory. And we see in verse 1, God says to Abraham, Do not be afraid, Abraham. And, and, and why not? Why shouldn't Abraham be afraid? And God tells him, Because I am your shield, your exceedingly great reward. You see, Abraham is afraid that the armies he's just defeated would would regroup and return to get their revenge. And we're living through a time where many are living with fear. Fear for their jobs, fear for their finances, fear for their health and the health of those that they love, fear for their children's future, for their mental health and, and, and education, fear for their businesses and homes, and, and, and the list can go on and on. And so this verse is for us today as well as for Abraham. God is not saying, I will give you a shield. He's saying, I am your shield. It reminds me of stories told after uh, gun attacks where people have placed their bodies over the top of someone else to shield them, to protect them from the bullets. And the second reason God says for us not to be afraid is because God is our uh, reward. Not only is God Abraham's shield, God will also be Abraham's reward. Not only will, will God reward Abraham for, faith, for his faithfulness by fulfilling his promise that he will be the father of a great nation, but that God will be his reward. So how can God be a reward? I mean, God does not um, belong to us. We, we belong to God. We can't earn or, or, or win God. But what God is saying to Abraham and, and to us is that God himself is what we want and what we need. That God is the answer to our seeking. That, that it, is, it is God that is the missing piece in our lives. God is Abraham's and our exceedingly great reward. You see, everything comes from God. When our children were small and, uh, and they'd come to a time in... Uh, where they were just beginning to understand that you needed money to buy things from the shops. And I remember them coming to me and saying, Dad, could you give us a pound, please? It was my birthday, and I, and I knew what they wanted to do with the money. See, kids can't keep secrets. And so they went to the shops with their mum and bought a bar of chocolate. They know what I like. Happy birthday, Dad, they said, beaming and giving me a, uh, their wrap present to me. It was a gift to me, but I had paid the price for it. And it's the same with God. Our whole being, all that we do and give to God, finds its source in God, 
He provides all things, all good things come from God. One of the advantages of getting old, and, and there are some advantages, and especially if you're retired, you have time to spend uh, with God, to read the Bible, to pray for others and ourselves, which is often what me and Glennis do most mornings. And looking at the things and situation that we pray about, about the needs and desires that we have, uh, the cares and concerns that, that trouble us, if I think about it, our prayers fall into several categories. And if we look in John's Gospel, we see them fulfilled in Jesus, in the I Am sayings of Jesus. We read in verse 2 that Abraham had needs, he had worries, he had cares and concerns, he had questions, just like we all have, especially in the season that we're living in. But God says to Abraham and, and to us, I know your needs, and I'm giving myself to you. All your needs will be met in me. We pray for bread, uh, for physical needs, and Jesus says, I am the bread of life. We pray for light and wisdom, and Jesus says, I am the light of the world. We pray for an understanding of God, and Jesus says, before Abraham was, I am. In other words, if you want to understand the Father, look at me. We pray for care, compassion, protection and provision. And Jesus says, I am the Good Shepherd. We pray for um, health and healing. And Jesus says, I, I, I am the resurrection and the life. We pray for truth and the way God wants us to live. And Jesus says, I am the way, the truth and the life. And we pray for... Uh, fruitfulness and effectiveness in our life and Jesus says I am the true vine whoever abides in me will produce much fruit a few years ago I remember going out sea fishing with some friends it, and I'm not a great sailor and I, I must admit I spent half the time being sick over the side of the boat but we was going out into the, into this bay and we found what we thought was a good spot and so we put the anchor down and began fishing, but, but after a while we found that we were getting further and further out to sea. And so we came back in a bit and put the anchor down again, but this time we began drifting nearer and nearer to the shore. You see, we found that the, the anchor rope was not long enough for the waters we were in. We were ebbing to and fro at the mercy of the flow of the water. And it was not until we could get the anchor into something solid that we stopped being pulled to and fro stop being pulled about and it's like that for us we we need to get our lives anchored into God to let God be our shield and our reward because nothing else in this world is solid and permanent if not our lives will be subject to the circumstances around us we'll be ebbing and flowing drifting around and around in circles because everything around us, especially at this time, is built on shifting sand. We need an anchor for our soul. Secondly, a promised believed. What I love about these Bible characters is that they're, they're just like us. Abraham says to God, God, thanks for being my shield and giving yourself to me as a reward, but, but what does it all matter if I don't have a son? Abraham's just like us. He comes with his needs, his shopping list. What can you give me, Lord? God gives himself to Abraham just as Jesus gives himself to us. But Abraham kind of pushes God aside and says, yeah, but what about my son? And thankfully, even in this, God is tender and loving, full of compassion and mercy, um, abounding in love. And in verse 4 and 5, God tells Abraham that he has not forgotten about that promise, but will certainly bring it to pass. God tells Abraham, your own son shall be your heir, not this servant of yours. When God seems to show, seems slow in keeping his promises, it's not because he's forgotten, but it's because we are impatient. And then God takes Abraham outside and tells him to look at the stars and says, and says, so shall your descendants be. 
See, going out on a clear night and looking at the stars will almost always bring a sense of wonder and awe in our lives. It, it makes us contemplate the big questions of life. It makes us sense just how small our world is, just how small we are. And yet the creator of the universe, our God who spoke everything into existence, cares and loves us. He knows us by name. If I say to someone I'm going to do something for them or, or I promise to phone them or, or something important is happening on that day, I always put a note by the kettle. Being retired, we drink lots of tea and coffee. And it reminds me not to forget to keep my promise. So the next time you look up at the stars, let it remind you that God will keep his promise. And Abraham believed God and it was reckoned to him as righteousness. And the best commentary that you can read on this passage is found in Romans uh, chapter 4. Here we read uh, the God whose grace Paul proclaims is the God who alone does great wonder. He created the universe from nothing. He calls the dead to life and he justifies the ungodly. And some ask, how were people saved in the old day before Jesus? Well, they were saved uh, just as we are today by the cross of Jesus and trusting in him. You see, we look back on what God through Jesus has done. They look forward to what God through Jesus would do. In Galatians 3 verse 8 we read the scripture um, that God foresaw that God would justify the Gentiles by faith and announce the gospel in advance to Abraham. And further on Paul writes um, that the promises were made to Abraham and to his seed. He does not say to his seeds meaning many but to his seed, which is Christ. Or as it says in the Message Bible, to his descendant, not descendants. When you believe God's word, especially when you believe what it says about Jesus, that God gives eternal life to everyone who believes in Jesus, like Abraham, you are declared righteous by God. There is no other, other way to receive eternal life. Abraham believed the promise and so was justified. Of all the ways that give, God gives himself to us, this is the greatest. Through our faith, his nature is given to us. His righteousness is in, imparted to us. And God told Abraham in verse 1, I will be your great reward. And now Abraham has received God's righteousness as part of that reward. No matter what happens in life, if we have Jesus, if we have God as our reward, we have everything and more than we need. We have more than we need. And finally, a promise guaranteed. You see, in Genesis 15, 7, we see God again for the third time telling Abraham that he will give him this land to inherit. All of, God, all of God's promises are important, but when we see God repeating a promise, it must be really important. And Abraham must have sensed the importance of this promise. And so Abraham says to God, how am I to know that I will possess it? How am I to know, Lord? How am I to know? Abraham will be thinking just as we often do, Lord, God, you, you, you're great and mighty. You, you, you are faithful and trustworthy. You, you do what you say. You, you fulfill your promises. You, you don't go back on your word. You don't let um, people down. But God, what about me? What about me, Lord? You see, I, I get it wrong more often than not. I, I say and, and, and do the wrong things. I, I have doubts and, and I will let people and I will let you down, God. You see, I, I, I miss the mark all the time. Lord, I, I, I just screw things up. God, how am I to know? Today, if we want to make an agreement, we would normally go to a solicitor who would draw up a contract and both parties would sign and it would be, be, be witnessed by others. 
But in Abraham's culture, they didn't go to the solicitor's shop. It was more like going to a butcher's shop. It was a bloody business. As soon as God, God described, uh, began describing to Abraham the, the, the animals that Abraham was supposed to gather, Abraham knew what was going to happen. You see, in that day, when you wanted to make a treaty or make a binding oath of another person, you would gather the animals listed here, cut them in two, then walk through the divided animals together. And by doing, doing so, you were saying that if either of you go back on your word, may you become like these animals. May your flesh be ripped apart. May your blood be shed. May you be humiliated and mocked. May your name be cursed. And this was how they made binding agreements back then. A covenant made in such a way was a deadly, serious affair. And in a way, I suppose this could be a good way of doing business. It would certainly stop people going back on their word. And so Abraham did as God had said. And Abraham waited and waited. And in his waited, he needed to drive off birds of prey that were coming and pecking away at the carcasses. And in Luke, um, in Luke chapter 8, we read about the birds of the air doing the work of Satan by stealing the word of God from the path in one of Jesus' parables. You see, if we're waiting for God to come through with a word, sometime, something that we believe God has said to us, we need to be like Abram, to drive off those spiritual birds of prey that will try to put doubt in your mind about that promise. Maybe, we, we've, maybe we've misunderstood, maybe we've angered God, maybe we've got it wrong. That's how we can often think. But we must do what Abraham did and drive off the spiritual birds from our mind to stop them stealing the word of God to us. And so Abraham waited. And as the sun was setting, Abraham fell into a deep sleep and a thick and dreadful darkness came over him. And though Abraham had prepared the animals for the covenant-making ceremony, God had called Abraham to fall into a deep sleep. What God is about to do, he's going to do by himself, without any help from Abraham. God has delayed in, in order to show Abraham that it's not by his effort and his watchfulness that this covenant will be fulfilled. And when the sun has set and darkness has fallen, a smoking brazier with a blazing torch passed between the pieces. God walked between the carcasses. And the most important thing to, to realise here is that God walked through alone. God did not ask Abram to walk through. You see, normally both parties of the covenant would walk through together, showing that they both had responsibilities to keep this covenant in, in order to maintain the covenant. But when God walks through alone, he shows Abraham that there is absolutely nothing Abraham or his descendants have to do in order for God to keep this covenant. God does it all. This chapter is about God doing it all. God does not meet us halfway. God does not even meet us most of the way. God does it all. We do nothing. And the reason I love this passage is because this is the way of our salvation in Jesus Christ. In order, it's a one-sided covenant. God asked Abraham to bring the animals, which Abraham did, but God walked through them alone. Similarly, God asked us to believe in Jesus Christ for eternal life, but God pays the penalty. God brings salvation and guarantees it by himself. He does not ask us for anything. He does not demand anything of us. Eternal salvation is an eternal one-sided covenant which cannot be broken or it makes God a liar and a covenant breaker. And when we read in the Gospels of the crucifixion of Jesus, we see this promise fulfilled. We read of the darkness falling over the land. 
The flesh of Jesus ripped apart with the nails driven into his body and the spear thrusted into his side. His blood was shed. Jesus was humiliated and mocked. Jesus was cursed, hanging on the cross. Jesus says in Matthew 11, Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. There is no labour, no hard work, no effort involved. We aren't the promise keepers, God is. He makes the promises to us and, and he keeps them all by himself. We don't give ourselves to God, for he's already given himself fully and completely to us. We don't make covenants with him, he makes covenants with us. And there is only one name to sign on the bottom, and that's his. So when we let these truths sink into our hearts, into, into our understanding, it calls us to thank and to praise and to worship God. It calls us to want to serve him, to offer ourselves to him. Let us pray. Lord, help us to, to anchor our lives in you. Help us to trust in your word. For you are great and mighty God. Thank you, Jesus, for the, for the price you pay to restore us to the Father, to have eternal life. And may the Lord bless you and cause his light to shine upon you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, folks, that's all. Stay safe.